Hello, in this video we will examine for loops in JavaScript and while loops, two ways of achieving repetition or executing code several times in a row based on parameters. At the same time we are also going to take a look at arrays which are variables designed to store multiple values in one object. Uh, all of these methods provide efficiency, they provide capabilities to work with large amounts of data at one time. To begin, we're going to work with a basic HTML template. We have our standard HTML elements such as, such as the main document HTML opening and closing tags, the head opening and closing tags, and the body tags. We're going to actually create a script block inside the body tag. And it's within this block that we will be executing our script. So the first thing that we're going to take a look at is the concept of working with an array. Whereas a variable can be thought of as a placeholder to store an item for use in a script, an array could really be thought of a single placeholder that can store multiple items. One example might be an array of um, let's say employees. So we could define an array called var my employees. And we could define an array in one of several ways. A common way is simply to just find a new array object, which is a JavaScript object and it's a reserved word, meaning that you wouldn't want to name a variable uppercase array, for example. So now we can add employees to the array. So let's just begin by adding, let's say, my employees. And here you actually use a square bracket to indicate a placeholder in the array. And arrays are zero based. So my employees zero equals Griffith. And my employees one equals Smith. while my employees 2 equals oh I don't know um, Lorenzo so what we have here is an actual array with three items with again indexes beginning at 0 so to retrieve employee Smith the second item in the array you'd actually index it by 1 so what we're going to do is actually write to the page um, the second item in the array. To do so, we're going to rely on the document write statement. So we'll type document.write, and in open and close parentheses, we're going to enter my employees, and again, it's case sensitive, one. And then I will save my script and refresh the browser and Smith appears. If I were to change that by writing employees 2, Lorenzo appears. Now let's say, or let's say that I change that to 3. There is no 3 in the array. So instead, when I run my page, I see undefined. So it's very important to test your scripts because you could actually have a false result of undefined and it would only be detected by someone actually interacting with the script instead of by some sort of error that's captured. So now that we have the basic idea down of how to work with an array, we can use this array in conjunction with a for loop. So we could actually run a sequence to visit each of these items in this array and take an action based on each item. A for loop has a very standard structure. It always begins with the lowercase word for, and then within an open and closed parenthesis, definition can be placed to indicate how the loop will function. We can have a variable we define in the very first parameter, and this is typically shown as i or j or k. So we could say var i equals zero, which means that we're going to start at zero in our loop, in the for, and then we can indicate a condition as far as when the for loop should end. So in this case what we'll say is 
i is less than 3, that's when the loop should end, when i is less than 3 as it increments, and then we can indicate in terms of how the for loop should behave. By typing i++, which is the default setting, we're simply saying to begin at 0 and iterate through sequential numbers until the case is reached where i is less than 3 and then stop. We could indicate a negative value here so we can make the loop actually decrement. We could start i at a high number like 3 or we could indicate here that it should skip every other number. There are a lot of ways that you could customize this for loop, but the most common way by far is to have a structure that's very similar to what you see here. You could also replace the three, incidentally, with a reference to the size of this array. So er this could be very dynamic if we like, but for now we're going to keep things a little simple. But what we're going to do is actually alert, which is display a message box each item in the array so what we're going to enter is my employees and instead of entering a number as we show in this document right example we're going to enter i which is the current number in the loop and it occurred to me just now that those should in fact be semicolons instead of commas i'm starting to see alert messages for each name in the loop so that demonstrates the basic concept of a for loop. 